Good morning. When Parliament resumes next week, Conservatives will do what the Liberals have not done after nearly a decade in government, table a comprehensive piece of legislation to protect Canadians online while preserving their civil liberties. The need for this approach is clear and present. Imagine opening your email or direct messages to find explicit messages about how someone is going to kill you or rape you. Or maybe it's a message threatening some sort of blackmail, like releasing deep fake nude photos if you don't comply with the abuser's demands. Then imagine the police telling you that there's not much that they can do to help you. And even if they do, living with the fear and constant anxiety of knowing that there's not much to stop the perpetrator from immediately beginning that pattern of harassment again. And then imagine this harassment escalating into physical violence or self-harm. Now imagine this happening to a child. Unfortunately, imagining any of these situations shouldn't take much effort. Criminal level online abuse happens every day to countless Canadians from every walk of life and little is being done to stop it. Last week, high profile journalist Mercedes Stevenson posted about how an online stalker had begun re-abusing her despite police intervention. And I've experienced criminal violent online threats too. But what hope do other Canadians have if the system struggles to protect people in positions of power and authority from criminal online abuse? After nine years of government, the federal Liberals have failed to answer that question. In 2021, former Liberal Justice Minister David Lametti tabled Bill C-36, which failed after being roundly criticized by every political stripe for its incursions on freedom of speech, but also for failing to include updates to Canada's criminal code that would make it easier for law enforcement officials to bring criminals to justice for com committing crimes online that are already illegal in the physical world. And earlier this year, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's new Justice Minister, Arif Rani, tabled Bill C-63, which is suffering the same fate as C-36 and for the same reasons. For nearly a decade, the Liberals have presented Canadians with a false dichotomy, that they should have to water down their civil liberties to be protected online. It doesn't have to be this way. New Conservative legislation will introduce protections in three areas of focus. Unlike previous Liberal bills, it will obtain these protections for Canadians without creating a government-managed surveillance state or putting a chill on charter-protected speech. The new legislation will first seek to modernize the existing crime of criminal harassment to address the ease and particularly the anonymity of how it happens online. To be clear, this update won't criminalize something like two people disagreeing about policy online or other types of expression of opinion that is protected under the Charter. Specifically, the provision in our new Conservative legislation will be based on the existing definition of criminal harassment, applying specifically to those who repeatedly send unwanted harassing content that causes somebody to reasonably fear for their safety or well-being. And as criminal harassment is largely already legally defined, there is an abundance of clear legal precedent to define what things like reasonable fear of safety means. So normal speech will unambiguously remain protected. And unlike Liberal Bill C-63, these provisions could be immediately and clearly defined in management by law enforcement and judicial officials, rather than, the, rather than left vague and overseen by the type of expensive kangaroo court that the Liberals in Bill C-63 proposed to create. So in this context, the new Conservative legislation will propose measures to enable victims of criminal harassment that happens online, who today have limited viable recourse to quickly and permanently end their harassment, to apply to a judge to identify their harasser and the harassment, and impose a variety of conditions to stop the harassment as the judge see fits, including indefinite no-contact orders. And, particularly, the legislation will provide additional legal clarity for the scenarios and criminal thresholds under which online operators, like social media platforms, must disclose the identity of an alleged abuser. The new Conservative legislation will also propose an aggravating factor if a perpetrator repeatedly sends criminally harassing material anonymously. For example, repeatedly sending criminal harass criminally harassing materials from multiple anonymous burner accounts. These measures are designed to make it easier and faster for victims of online harassment to interact with law enforcement and receive 
protections that actually work, and in turn, for law enforcement to de-escalate violence in a timely fashion. Liberal Bill C-63 contains no provisions in this regard, a glaring oversight for a bill ostensibly designed to protect Canadians from online harm. The second area of focus the new Conservative legislation will provide is mechanisms designed specifically to protect minors, so children, who are online. These measures recognize that minors are particularly vulnerable online and need specific measures to keep them safe while providing their parents with tools to make decisions about their children's online activity. As opposed to C63, which pushes setting specific rules for minors' use of online social media platforms and other online operators far, far into the future and behind closed doors through an opaque regulatory process, our new conservative legislation will directly legislate a duty of care for minors that online operators like social media platforms must adhere to. The bill will require online operators to do things like the following. Provide parents with safeguards, controls, and transparency to prevent harms to their kids when they are online while providing adults with a clear and easy to use mechanism to opt out of any default parental controls. Implement privacy preserving and trustworthy age verification methods. For example, computer algorithms that ensure reliable age verification to detect when a user is a minor and restrict access to any content that is inappropriate, inappropriate for minors to such users while expressly prohibiting the use of a digital ID for these purposes. Ensure the appropriate enforcement of such measures through a system of administrative penalties and consequences by government agencies and bodies that already exist and which are already mandate to ensure compliance with legislative authorities enacted by Parliament. Specifically, the legislation will require operators to act in the best interests of a user whom it knows or should reasonably know is a minor by taking reasonable steps in the design and operation of its products and services to prevent or mitigate the effects of the following. Physical harm or incitement of such harm and online bullying and harassment of minors. Online sexual violence against minors, including any conduct directed at a minor online that constitutes an offense under the criminal code and is committed for a sexual purpose or unsolicited or unwanted sexual actions or, communi or communications directed at a minor online. The creation or dissemination of imagery of a minor that is sexually exploitative humiliates them, is harmful to their dignity, or invades their privacy. The promotion and marketing of products and services that are currently unlawful to minors, for minors. Mental health disorders, including anxiety, depression, loneliness, eating disorder, and substance use disorders. And the promotion of self-harm, suicide, and suicidal behaviors. And patterns of use that indicate or encourage addiction-like behaviors. The legislation will outline in detail how operators must comply with and operate under this duty of care, including reporting requirements, marketing prohibit prohibitions, and other items. Operators who don't comply with these provisions will face steep fines as well as a private right of action. And finally, the new Conservative legislation will update Canada's existing laws on the non-consensual distribution of intimate images to ensure that the non-consensual distribution of highly realistic intimate images created by artificial intelligence, for example, deep nudes, is criminalized while preserving the existing provisions in current law about fair use. The bill will also increase penalties for this offence and even more so for the following non-consensual distribution of intimate images that depict sexual assault. This action will close a, a glaring loophole in Canadian criminal law that I've been calling for on behalf of victims' rights advocates for nearly a year now, and which Bill C-63 did not address. And unlike Liberal Bill C-63, our Conservative legislation will not seek to reinstate the former Section 13 of the Canadian Human Rights Act which even the Toronto Star has argued is unnecessary to protect Canadians from hate speech. If more evidence was needed to bolster their argument, the Liberals had it provided to them in spades this past summer. The debacle of attempting to appoint someone to arbitrate decisions under Liberal Bill C-63, who had argued that terror was not an irrational approach, underscored that an extrajudicial system governed by overly vague definitions of what constitutes appropriate speech is, putting it mildly, a flawed approach bound to result in vexatious complaints and a chilled on, on protected speech. 
And then the cost of the new three-armed extrajudicial bureaucracy that the Liberals proposed to administer these, their provisions in C63 was revealed by the Parliamentary Budget Officer to be a staggering $200 million that could be better used to bolster the capacity of existing regulators and law enforcement across the country. As the Toronto Star wrote, Canada already has laws and numerous legal decisions that interpret those laws to protect against hate speech. These laws apply to online hate speech as well. Existing laws regarding hate speech need to be enforced, something the Liberal government has been loath to do. In addition to the measures the new Conservative legislation will provide, the Liberals could also, in their tenure, have educated the public about provenance initiatives, which seek to give online users more tools to ascertain the sources of information. As well, they could have educa educated the public on how information is presented to them by online operators, rather than being myopically focused on finding ways to limit their right to speech at all. Because in a democracy, the way to address difficult speech that doesn't cross the line of criminality is more speech, not less. So Conservatives will call upon Liberals to scrap Bill C-63 and pursue our new approach instead. While Liberal Bill C-63 includes one supportable measure, strengthening mandatory rep reporting requirements of internet child pornography by internet operators, this component could be hived off and likely passed on unanimous consent while the measures of our new legislation are considered or put into a new bill should an election be called. Additionally, measures to pr for measures to pretend, uh, prevent online sextortion, provisions in bill, Conservative Bill C-381 could be, re be revisited. Canadians are living in fear and anxiety and are dying because of criminal harassment, particularly because of the ease and an anonymity with which it, it can occur up online. They need common sense tools to protect them, while protecting their civil liberties, not more in liberal incompetence and foot dragging on this issue. The Liberals must adopt a, the common sense approach set forth in this new legislation, or given recent events, they must call an election and let Canadians tell them which approach they prefer. Immediate common sense protections for when they are online, or more costly censorship bureaucracy. Thank you. Discussions with the NDP and the Bloc. I know they also want major changes to the Online Harms Act. I know, for example, the Bloc wants age verification. So, have you talked to them, and would they support your your bill? It's a great question. So, um, the Liberals they introduced Bill C-63 in February, and then they didn't put it up for debate until like right in the last dying days of, of of the last session. The bill was debated in the House for an hour, and a lot of what I talked about today, I sort of put forward as a thought piece in my debate. Um, and if you look through the debate response, there was a lot of positive feedback from the other opposition parties. So, you know, I take that as a good sign, and, you know, as parliamentarians are supposed to do, we took that feedback from the debate, from what's been said in, I, I think, fairly robust criticism of BC, Bill C-63 and tried to meld this into this piece of legislation. So that we're doing what the government has failed to do over 10 years is, is say, here's the right approach. It's designed to garner support across political stripe. It's common sense. And, you know, especially seeing, like, the, the Liberals have had how many years and now two shots at this, and now you've got the Justice Minister out trying to say one thing or another. This is a common sense approach that they can just take, run with, and that we can ensure that Canadians have more protections online while providing, uh, ensuring that their speech is protected. Can you put us through the thinking of introducing new legislation instead of working to amend the existing legislation? And, and what's the likelihood that a, a bill is going to pass given that we're going into like... Uh... I mean, you don't have to take my word on this, but like virtually every stakeholder, there have been so much resounding criticism of Bill C-63, even from, you know, former or current, I'm not sure, opposition colleagues of the government, right? Like, this, they, they've said it's unwieldy and untenable. So given, like, I, I, I don't think that there's anyone standing in this room here today who doesn't know of someone or hasn't personally experienced situations like I've described online. So the government has had two kicks at the can and almost 10 years to get this right. They haven't. And this is why I think we've done what they, they haven't been able to do, is just serve them up on the platter a, a, a piece of legislation that will work. And it seems like the, uh, the Justice Minister is actually looking at making some changes. I mean, I think they also recognize that there are some failings in, in their own bill. So w would there be a world in, in which you could collaborate maybe with the government to try to... I, we, we have, I have done his job for him. 
I have drafted a piece of legislation that should get all party support. It contains common sense measures to protect Canadians online. It's, it's right there for him. And you know, you ask me about working with other parties. The Liberal government has rammed this down everybody's throat without consultation. And that's why we're in this, in this mess right now, right? It's their non-collaborative approach. It's them. He stood up in the speech in the House of Commons and said, I will not, speak, I will not spit, split this bill in June, right? And now, you know, in, in, clearly with a lack of support across the country, he's going, well, maybe I should do something about this. Enough. Like, enough. So that we will be tabling a very common sense piece of legislation which will actually protect Canadians without imposing any restrictions on, on their speech or their, their civil liberties. And it's common sense and we can move forward. I guess the question is, would you be happy if, let's say, the Justice Minister kind of took what is in your bill right now and put it in the you know what the, the, the only ideas that the conser that the, the liberals have had any traction on have been conservative ideas recently for me and for i know all of my conservative colleagues feel very strongly about this as well as my party leader we know that there are millions of canadians who are facing this type of lack of safety online and we need protections that don't impinge on civil liberties. So this is why we have done their job for them. If they took it and ran with it, like that's, that would be a common sense approach, right? But as I said in closing, if they're not willing to do that, then they need to let Canadians choose in an election if they want to keep down this, you know, two kicks at the can, clear inability to deliver results and, and, and you know, safety for Canadians, or go to an election. Last question. I have a question about the, the restrictions for minors. I'm wondering if that would tackle uh, like Discord or like private uh, chats that might be pro Anna. Like how would how would that be enforced and how does that work? It's a great question. So we know that you know there's been a lot of focus on quote social media platforms, right? But we know that technology and ways of communication are constantly evolving and they're often evolving faster than the speed of government to address them. So the bill will contain um, a precise but you know, fairly big definition, which will use the term online operator, so that it does allow for flexibility in the legislation for law enforcement and, and the judiciary to ensure that people, like under that definition, companies that are providing services to minor are covered by the, the duty of care.